welcome to this exciting episode of Bob the Sight Man. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at some sheeting and what makes signs fail. I have a lot of questions on the type of reflective materials we use, um, what makes traffic signs shine at night, you know, various things like that. So here at the county, Napa County, California, what we use is 3M products. That's all we use, exclusive 3M. Uh, they cost a little bit more. Um, you know, there's other um, materials out there from different companies. You know, we use 3M, there's Avery Denison and you know other companies. I'm not trying to say their product is inferior or anything, but um, we follow what Caltrans, the state of California, Caltrans is the highway maintenance for you know all our highways and stuff. We follow their standard. Their standard is um, 3M. It lasts about 12 years. They guarantee it for 12 years. Anyways, there's different kinds of, of the sheeting. So you have the white diamond we use grade. What they call it's DG3. Diamond grade three, DG3. It's kind of like their best product, and it, it's really reflective at night. Um, you might say it outshines the competition. So you have your basic white, and then you have your basic green. It's a fluorescent yellow green. Um, we reserve this for school zones. Uh, we try to keep everything consistent here, um, so that way, whenever you're in a school zone, you see this color versus this color which is the um, fluorescent yellow. Now I'll show you the difference between the two. There's a big noticeable difference. And then in construction areas, we use the fluorescent orange, okay? Uh, the reason we use the green for school zones in our area anyways, uh, it's recommended by the MUTCD, you know, for green for school zones. We don't want to um, downplay pedestrian areas where there's, um, you know, whenever you have a pedestrian sign, you always put the green. We keep it here so you know you're in a school zone in the Napa County. So whenever you see the fluorescent yellow, and the city of um, Napa does the same thing. Um, pretty much the fluorescent green for school crossings, not pedestrians, because pedestrians crossing will use the yellow. So you have that um, and the white. Anytime you use the white, that's usually meaning a, a, a um, regulatory sign. The yellow is usually reserved for warning signs, and the orange is reserved for construction and road, road work, temporary road work signs. Okay. Now, okay, here's two 3M products. This is the diamond grade material here on the top, and on the bottom we have the HIP, high intensity prismatic. Now, the high intensity prismatic, prismatic is quite cheaper than the reflective um, DG3. They're both reflective. This will usually, the 3M guarantees this for like 12 years. This has a reflectivity life of about 10 years, I think they guarantee it. You can get more depending on the uh, location of the signs. I'll show you some more of that coming up here. But um, so you can kind of see the difference a little bit. You can see the, 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 the lines in it here. This is the, that's how you can usually tell it. And they call it the diamond grade. As you can see, there's little diamonds in it. See if I can't zoom in on that a little okay, here bit Here you can see the little diamonds. It's considered a diamond grade. And this is the HIP. You can see the lines that are running through it. It's not quite as reflective as this, but it still will be reflective at night. We use this on maybe some litter removal signs, or if I make some signs that are for um, you know temporary agencies or something, for a temporary um, regulatory sign or something like that, we'll use the cheaper grade. As you can see right here, the difference between the old logo and the new logo, it's faded quite a bit. So this, I didn't date this, but I think I put this up when we first started doing them. They're probably about seven years old and they've started to fade. Um, there was the cover over that, the, uh, that protects it from the sun, but that's what happens when you print these with a inkjet printer. Um, now a lot of sign companies counties of different agencies are putting these um you know printing directly onto your sheeting so i imagine in a few more years we're gonna have to go around and replace all these logos that's just kind of the trade-off you use for um using something like that so the sun plays a big factor in age and time in um changing the reflectivity but and, and fading but sun is your biggest factor right there. okay another thing that can make your signs fail really quick is a fire you can see how it bubbled it up. It got really hot by the fire and just kind of bubbled it up. Uh, it took all the reflectivity away, even though it looks nice and bright and yellow. There's no more reflectivity left to it. 
So there's another factor in why signs fail. Another reason signs fail is called the human factor. Okay, um, this sign got hit by a mower. Of course, our guys told me, oh, I think I bumped your sign. Okay, and that's got a little thing on there. I might have bumped the bike lane sign with the mower. Might have bumped it. I think definitely he bumped it. It, it shredded it all up pretty good. So there's another factor that will end the life of your sign very quick. Okay, another factor on why a sign will fail. This is an old, um, old sign. It was the old yellow, okay. Um, shotgun blast. I found a couple of shotgun shells at the bottom of it. So no matter what you do, no matter what kind of sheeting you use, you're not gonna stop that. That is just act of vandalism. Okay, another reason signs fail it's just simple, poor maintenance. When I first took over for the sign job, there was an area out there in Napa, um, and they used these old street signs, and the letters were just peel and stick, and it was just a green, what they call the engineer sheeting. Well, after time, these see how faded those letters were with the sun hitting them? They were just peel and stick, and you had to put them in this like oven with all these lights on, and they don't even use those anymore. So there's a reason, um, I guess you could call it poor maintenance, lack of, um, not wanting to put any money into your infrastructure. That's okay, I'll show you some more examples of why signs will typically fail. Um, I pulled a few out of my bin. This is that bin that we send back to Zap Manufacturing. Every 90 days they come by our area. If we want them to stop and pick it up, they will. And then what they do is they return the old ones that we had no matter what. So if I was to take these, send them back, 90 days later they'll come and deliver them. But if I don't want to send the bin back, I don't have to at that time. I usually wait until it's worth their while to, to you know, I get it three quarters of the way full or so. Believe me, sometimes it don't take long and I'll show you why. Here's an example here of a sign that just didn't meet reflectivity anymore. It's engineer grade. Okay, see if we can get a, so it's engineer grade. There's no diamond grade left on it. So this is an old sheeting called engineer grade. Then they went to high um, intensity prismatic, which is HIP. And then they went to a, um, diamond grade. So I take this down because at night it won't reflect anymore. There's the reason the sign will fail. This is the old HIP. Um, it's like a honeycomb shape. Um, this sign was faded. Um, you know, it just, it's all bent up and everything that got hit. So whenever a sign gets damaged like that, we just take it and we get rid of it. Uh, another, like I said before, here's another reason signs fail fire damage it got um, heated up a lot there so we got rid of that this one old engineer grade so it no longer meets its reflectivity requirements so we get rid of it reason to sign fails accident okay um, somebody hit the stop sign knocked it down uh, there's no way to fix that I could try to bend it back but it just ain't gonna work I set this aside with the other one here and I'll throw it back on top so it'll um, uh, doesn't so it lays it won't lay flat if I don't and it kind of takes up more room. Another reason the signs fail uh, somebody shot this with something um, I don't know what so what we did is we just took this down made an Etna Spring um, street sign you know 36 by 9 whatever maybe it was a little longer for this one and then we put up that yellow diamond T intersection sign so you kind of hear that that's why a sign is fail age will be a factor too they used to use these old reflectors put them on on the back of engineering grade even has a date stamp back on here highway safety sign company 1988 so that one was out in the field for quite a long time another factor in why signs fail they just get too old. You can see it was cracking and you know the sheeting starts to come off. So stop sign, that's why it failed. And then we have this one. Somebody decided they were gonna paint it white. I don't know why they would do that. So we went, we got a call that somebody painted the stop sign white. So we went out there and changed it. And then we noticed that the guy in front of his house there, he had all kinds of stuff. He was painting, primering and stuff like that. His house, getting ready to, to paint it. But I don't understand he had little kids there. Why would you paint a stop sign and jeopardize the safety of your kids? Some people I just don't know. Uh, here's another example, you know, just faded. Uh, it's not even really red anymore. It's kind of a semi-red. 
if you hold up the two, even though that's an older stop sign, you can still see how it's faded. So we change that out. Same thing, another HIP fading. It was underneath the oak tree. It starts to get these little scale stuff, but no, ref no longer reflects at night. Um, this one here was just, you know, getting, uh, starting to peel. Um, it had some graffiti on it and it was silk screen printed, so I couldn't get rid of the silk screen on it. And above that arrow, there was the Solano Avenue sign. It's all bent up and tweaked and the border's missing. So I put new signs on. We, we go ahead and we, uh, you know, upgrade the whole thing. All three signs, even that little diamond one I showed you with the reflectors, we upgrade them all. And this is an example of another reason why we change out signs. I don't even know if I can legally show this on YouTube, but we'll, we'll try it, see what happens. So the graffiti artists like to go to work sometimes. And um, this particular sign is an old HIP and it's printed on there, silk screen printed, not the EC film that I use, but that I showed you with the cutters and stuff. So, he drew a little cowboy on it. And um, I guess those are his feet hanging down, that one is anyways. But anyways, if we tried to remove this, it's just gonna, it's not gonna work out right. So we decided to take it down go with the smaller sign that was a 36 so we're going to go with the 30 um, for the deer crossing sign so there's some examples on why signs fade i got a couple more for you i shouldn't say why signs fade why signs fail and fade too at the same time all right another perfect example of some neglect by our guys they have the slow stop sign and they just throw it in the back of the truck. Look how um, scratched up and faded that is. And then the other side is all coated with oil. Who can read that? I mean, come on guys, we can do better than that. Okay, here's some more neglect. So, just thrown in the back of the truck. I made these for the guys. I made them out of a chloroplast, they're thicker. You can see them better. They're reflective at night. And when we work on our main road here, Silver Auto Trail with higher speeds, this is a 24 inch compared to the little 18 inch slow stop paddles. Then again, it's just laid in the back of the truck. You know, if you're gonna take the time to do that, put it behind the seat, take care of it. There's a big factor on how some signs fail. You know, not, not all signs are traffic signs. These signs depend on public safety and stuff, and this is how they're treated. All right, there you have it. Why signs will fail, the type of sheetings we use and why. Um, very, like they said, various reasons signs will fail. Uh, improper sheeting, um, old sheeting, age, the biggest factor, age, sunlight, um, graffiti guys, the human factor, which is, you know, vandalism, graffiti. Um, you saw some of the um, signs that I, I made that were just tossed in the back of vehicles. You know, that just, uh, I don't know. So that's why I don't like to make them anymore. It's like, okay, I could make them cheaper and everything, yeah, for the county. But I take my time to do that and they're treated like that, go buy them. You know, spend more money for your department. Don't come suck in my budget dry. So, you know, and also you see a lot of highway signs that are faded. Caltrans in my area is notorious. They have signs that must be 20, 30 years old out there. Uh, even, probably even older. You can't read them anymore at night. They're just black at night. When we go out and do reflectivity checks at night, I see the horrible shape. So one thing I do like about the county is I have been given a lot of, uh, I can't say freedom, but responsibility where I don't really have to answer to a lot of people on certain things. And one of the things is I always make sure that the signs are in tip top condition. If they're faded, if they're old, I like to get them out of the field, especially when they're a stop sign, yield sign, or anything like that. I don't like to leave old stuff out in the field. Uh, I like to get it changed out right away. I get rid of the graffiti right away. So, you know, somebody sees one thing, it's like monkey see, monkey do. So anyways, like I said, and then what, what drives me nuts is I see pictures all the time of these signs that are out of specifications. You know, I have a book, um, that we use all the signs is the California MUTCD and all the signs are to a spec that, that I make. I mean, I get it down to the last 64th of an inch. I mean, I'm closer than that. I mean, I get mine exact to the specifications. 
Uh, I have a book that shows all the specific specifications, how they're laid out and everything. So, you know, I take a great, great pride in that, what I do. And I always make sure they're the right size, the right color, the right size sign blank, the right, you know, if it's diamond, if it's straight, if it's regulatory, if it's warning and all that stuff. So a lot of factors go into making traffic signs and hanging traffic signs too. It's not like you just go plop one in anywhere. But anyways, back to some of the, the uh, other agencies. And a lot of times when you see a sign, it's just neglect. It's a matter, and I understand it's money. Our, you know, with COVID and everything that's it, we don't always have a lot of that money available. But just think of this, okay, well, we didn't want to spend two or $3,000 to fix, you know, buy the materials to fix a couple signs. But if somebody gets in a crash, we'll pay out 50, 60, 70, 80, hundred thousand dollars for a lawsuit, just like nobody's business, you know? So, you know, that, that affects stuff too. You think, well, we got insurance, but then your insurance premiums go up every year, every year. So, you know, that, that couple thousand dollar investment that you didn't want to make could save somebody's life or it could save your um, self from litigations in court. Um, you know, the, the lawyers here in California, there's a, I guess you call it a plethora of them. So anyways, little thing there on, you know, when signs get graffitied, when they get painted, um, abused, uh, faded, they need help, who are they gonna turn to? That's right, they're gonna turn to the sign man. As always, thanks for watching.